What is up creatives? This is Tom. Welcome back to another video. So Apple has just released this phone, the iPhone SE 2. It's sort of their sort of budget uh, line of phones. You can pick this up in the UK for £419. Uh, I think it's about sort of four, yeah, four nineteen four. $50 uh, dollars in the States. But one of the things which are sort of most exciting about this phone is the camera. Apparently the camera is absolutely incredible on this phone, especially for a device of this sort of price point. But how does it compare if we are to compare it to a real camera? This is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Um, it is obviously fully rigged out at the moment. So I've got sort of monitor, big old battery to power this camera. And this is an amazing cinema camera for the price again but it is obviously significantly more expensive than this camera but I thought it would be a super cool test to compare the two so we're going to run through some camera tests some sample footage and then talk about the uh, footage that you get out of this little phone and whether it stacks up to something a bit more serious so without further ado let's just jump in Hi guys, so this is the setup that I'm using. As I said, a little bit janky. I've got the iPhone on top here. And in terms of a lens, I'm using the Sigma to 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8. The iPhone is going to be quite a lot wider, I think, in terms of the actual shot, just because it's, uh, I just I just can't get, in terms of a, like, this is a crop sensor camera, it's a micro four thirds. And then uh, I've got a speed booster on the uh, Pocket 4K. So it's just going to be way sort of slightly more crop, more zoomed in. But hopefully this is the sort of a still a decent comparison lighting today is really overcast kind of a bit foggy So it should look quite nice and cinematic quite even You're not gonna get sort of like a ridiculous sunset lens flares and things like that But it is good nice even lighting so I'm just gonna shoot a bunch of stuff and see what we can get Alright, so we just wrapped. This is probably the tightest vlogging angle. I've only got a 24mm lens on my Canon 90D, but that shoot went really well. So I think now it's time to just go back and sort of have a look at the footage, go through it and discuss it and compare. Yo guys, what's up? So back in the office now, and uh, what we're gonna do is we're just going to go through some of the footage. This is the first time that I've gone through this footage. Haven't looked at it beforehand. I've literally just taken the uh, SSD from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. The nice thing about these cameras is you can shoot straight to these drives and then I just edit off these drives normally. So we're just going to take a look at some of the footage and then compare it to some of the iPhone footage as well. All right, so I think right off the bat, you can immediately see uh, a huge difference just terms in terms of sort of saturation and obviously sort of picture readiness. I, I know that's a maybe a silly expression, but the Pocket 4K, the cinema camera, you would be expected to grade all this footage. So everything is gonna look quite flat and neutral out of post. Then when you throw a grade on it, things will start to come together and look more like a final piece. Obviously the iPhone SE 2, things look really nice out of camera, but personally, I do think things are a bit oversaturated. They're just obviously designed to be shot sort of straight out of camera. Personally, I like the control basically being able to sort of desaturate and grade things to how you actually want the shot to look. That's a big advantage of the Pocket 4K, but overall the picture is really great out of the uh, iPhone SE 2. I was thoroughly sort of impressed at some of these static shots at just how much detail is in basically every sort of aspect of the image. One of the other biggest differences is dynamic range. Things are blown out on the iPhone a bit more. Unfortunately, I didn't get any uh, sunset footage just because the day was sort of so overcast, but I think the iPhone would have handled that relatively well, but you're just gonna get more data to be able to pull back the shot with something like the Pocket 4K or something, just a more expensive camera. You just got much more data in the shot. So I want to talk briefly about frame rates. Uh, the iPhone SE 2 actually shoots 4K at 24 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and 60 frames a second. Like that is absolutely crazy. The camera that I'm filming right now on is the uh, Canon uh, 90D, and you know that's a thousand pound, thousand dollar camera, and that doesn't even shoot 4K 60. So you're getting like an unbelievable deal just in terms of the frame rate options that you get on the iPhone SE 2. So the Pocket 4K, like this camera here, 
one of the main selling features is that it shoots at 4K 60. So it's just amazing that you get that frame rate option. So if we compare the two and have a look at these side by side, I think the sort of story is the same. The 4K 60 is okay on the SE2, but it does look like you're sort of sacrificing some data. Things are just a bit oversaturated, but on the whole, having that available as a choice is amazing. And in terms of the slow-mo options, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of this shot of this sort of cow at 120 frames a second. Again, the story is the same. Things like the detail is just all retained in the uh, cinema camera versus on the iPhone SE2, things just start to break down when you work on these sort of higher frame rate options. Don't get me wrong, slow motion would be amazing uh, for things like, you know, just filming like a friend doing a backflip or something like that, but you're not gonna get sort of really gorgeous cinematic slow motion out of a camera like this. It's just, you've just not got enough data going through the camera. So I wanna talk briefly about the sort of flexibility of the camera. Obviously that is a main reason why you want to buy a, a sort of more advanced camera is the flexibility, versatility and creativity that you can get from a camera like the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. The ability to be able to swap out lenses, you've got some sort of focal range zooms, means that you can go from a shot that looks like this to a shot that looks like this, all within sort of one camera. Whereas if you digitally zoom on the iPhone SE, you're just basically getting a sort of cropped in version of the image and things start to look really, really shaky very, very quickly. There's a massive advantage of using these sort of uh, more advanced cameras, buying lenses, being able to swap things out. As you start developing sort of slightly more advanced filmmaking video creation techniques, you'll start to do things like use foreground in your images to sort of help the uh, feel of a video and things just don't look quite as good when you are restricted to this sort of super wide field of view. The shot consistently on the SE2 actually looks sharper than the Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera. Now that is kind of strange considering uh, the sort of detail uh, in the sensor on the Pocket 4K. However, I think what is most apt is the shot looks, whilst it's softer on the Pocket 4K, it just feels more natural. There's a quality in these cinema cameras that you just can't replicate using a little camera like this. I think this is closest to if I got the shot from the 4K and then added a load of sharpening in post to the footage from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. Like things look a little bit too over detailed, a bit too much. You know, these are consumer cameras. They're dedicated to people just sort of shooting run and gun style and they don't want something looking flat and neutral. But with the 4K, you just get all of that control. Another thing I want to mention briefly is the detail and the sort of up close and uh, slightly more macro shots from this camera. I was thoroughly impressed with this little shot that I got here. I wasn't expecting the iPhone to be able to focus on something so close. There is so much detail in that dandelion. You get these sort of, uh, and the cobwebs here out of this tiny little iPhone camera. It really is extremely impressive. Another thing I want to talk about briefly is the handheld nature of this camera. So the uh, Apple stabilization on these phones now is just exceptional. Like you can walk around with this camera. Obviously it was mounted for the duration of this video on top of the Pocket 4K pretty much. There were a couple of shots I did handheld and it's amazing the level of sort of uh, stabilization that these cameras uh, have now. You're getting basically no little horrible micro jitters on this camera. Whereas if you are using something like the Pocket 4K, this big sort of bulky cinema rig, you're going to need to rig that camera out. There's a reason this rig is so big and that's because I want the extra weight to balance out uh, some of the weight on this camera. So, you know, I can get a slightly more stable movement. Whereas with this phone, you kind of don't really need to do that. Apple has done a lot of the hard work for you. You can just get great looking video straight out of camera. And that kind of brings us on nicely to the overall sort of conclusion on the video. Of course, the Pocket 4K sort of smashes the iPhone out of the park in terms of video production. Things like the depth of field control and the flexibility of being able to change lenses and just the overall picture style and quality out of the Pocket 4K is just gorgeous, night and day different to the sort of slightly restricted video on the iPhone SE2. However, if you are looking for a phone that delivers really great quality video for the price, like for the price and it's compared to other phones in the market, like this camera is amazing quality for uh, the price that it comes in at. 
Are you going to go and shoot movies on this phone? Probably not. However, you can basically shoot, uh, you know, social media content, anything like that. This is a really great choice for anything like that. And you can do it for basically half the price of any other sort of mainstream phone right now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I found it useful, found it interesting. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section down below. If you've made it to this point in the video, I would love it if you drop the video a like. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more content just like this. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you